Now, on the 3rd of September, which is the final day within this series, we have Venus Stationing Direct. Now, Venus Stationing Direct is a very wonderful thing insofar as any planet Stationing direct is a wonderful thing because it's a far better thing than when that planet stationed retrograde to begin with. However, because she still hasn't fully turned direct, I'd say that it's probably not the most useful day as far as doing anything is concerned. And the reason for that is because after a planet has just been retrograde and is in a state of stationing, if you were to use that planet for anything from an electional astrology perspective, it might feel as if it takes that planet a very long time to activate, or it might feel as if it takes that planet a very long time to really step forward into its power because stationing direct only means that she stopped going retrograde. It doesn't actually mean that she has returned to her normal upswing of action. So I would say that this is a wonderful day as far as contemplating the Venusian things that you want to do or the Venusian things that you want to accomplish. It could be a very wonderful planning day. This podcast episode is sponsored by Astrology Hubs Academy. Wherever you are on your astrology journey, we have a class that will help you get to the next level. Well, hello there and welcome to your weekly astrological weather. I am so happy that you've decided to join us here. For those of you who are new, you have just joined a worldwide astrological conversation that's happening here every single week. We feature a lot of incredible astrologers and here, especially on the weekly weather, give you that perspective you need to navigate your week, your days with the astrological energies in mind so you can make the best decisions for yourself. Today, we are joined by an incredible astrologer, Michael Bryan, who's also an author. Michael is such a unique and amazing astrologer in his ability to very lucidly, very clearly translate the astrological energy so we can apply them in our lives. So we are in for an amazing treat for this week's weather. Before we dive in, Michael is also going to be one of the three teachers who is teaching our fall workshop series on health, wealth, and fulfillment. And he's going to be covering fulfillment and how to actually look at your astrological chart and find the most streamlined way to experience fulfillment in your life based on what you're here encoded, what you're wired to do, what it is that is going to ultimately give you the most fulfillment in this lifetime. You can find out more about the entire series at astrologyhub.com slash workshop. And I hope that you will check that out now and jump in as soon as you can. And without further ado, let's turn it over to Michael. Michael, I am so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us for the week ahead. Tell us what the overarching theme is for this week. You know, I've been looking at this week for quite some time. And one of the combinations that we have coming up that I'm really always inspired by is we have the Mars Jupiter combination, which is going to be the Mars Jupiter sesqui quadrate, which is happening on August 28th. And so that day in general is looking like a very auspicious day. Now, as you know, I practice not just traditional astrology, but I also practice Uranian astrology and cosmobiology. So this sesqui quadrate, even though this hard aspect isn't one that we usually hear about within the context of a lot of other astrological spaces. This is one of the most powerful aspects ever because all of these hard aspects, whether we're talking about the semi-square, the square, the opposition, the sesqui quadrate, the conjunction, all of these hard aspects are aspects of manifestation. And so I have a lot to say about the Mars Jupiter sesqui quadrate on the 28th of August, but I'm planning to talk about the entire week ahead for our listeners. Specs of manifestation. I just love the way that sounds. What does that mean? Well, in traditional astrology, we have the four aspects. So we have the sextile, the square, the trine, the opposition, and we also have the conjunction, even though a conjunction, as far as astrology is concerned, isn't really an aspect. It's an important 
planetary something, but it's not really an aspect based on what our definition of an aspect is. However, there are these other aspects that are called octiles. And there's this notion of harmonics within astrology. And harmonics represent different ways in which we can divide the 360 degrees of the zodiac. So for example, if we divide the zodiac of 360 degrees by the number eight, we end up getting equal 45 degree divisions. And so it's these aspects of eight, as it were, that make up our octile series. Those aspects include the 45 degree semi-square, the square, because 45 times two gives us the square, the 135 degree sespi quadrate, because 45 times three gives us 135, and the 180 degree opposition, because 45 times four gives us 180. So these are our hard aspect series, or this represents our hard aspect series. And since the conjunction is kind of a floater, it is one of the hard aspects as well, even though you can consider a conjunction to be a hard aspect, a soft aspect, because we know the value of the conjunction is zero. So technically the conjunction exists within every one of our aspect series, basically. But back to these hard aspects, these hard aspects represent concrete events or the manifestation of concrete events within our world. And this is something that's a very ancient thought within astrology because the ancients saw this in terms of the phases of the moon. When we think about the eight phases of the moon, we don't necessarily include the trines of the moon to the sun or the sextile of the moon to the sun within that. We're really just talking about the moon's conjunction to the sun, her squares to the sun, and her opposition to the sun at the full moon. However, between those major lunar phases, we also have these 45 degree angles. We have the 45 degree uh, semi-square to the sun, the first of which is going to be the moon's waxing crescent. Then we have the 135 degree relationship between the moon and the sun, which is her waxing gibbous. And so the ancients knew that this number eight was a very important number as far as the manifestation of these dramatic lunar phases was concerned. One of the things with a forecast like this is that we don't really understand the specifics of a person's chart per se. So we can't actually say that X thing is going to happen to you on this day. But what we can say is what are the overarching themes or what are the overarching combinations of stellar influences and how do those combinations of stellar influences line up with things that you possibly want to manifest? So for example, on a sun Saturn day, you probably aren't going to launch something that you want to be successful. However, you will probably launch something that you want to be successful on a Sun-Jupiter day because Sun-Jupiter is more analogous or it has more of a relationship to success than Sun-Saturn does. So we're going to be looking at these combinations from the perspective of electional astrology. I'm going to talk about how they could possibly manifest within a person's life if that person has that as a natal chart combination as well. But I've also chosen to throw in some other wonderful concrete aspects, such as the parallels and the contra parallels. And I'll talk about them as we go through those so that people can see how to use these combinations in the most fulfilling way possible. My guess is if I were to look at a vision board that you've made, I'd see pictures of vibrant, healthy looking people and some indication of wealth. No, I'm not talking about the cliched red Corvette or private jet but probably something a little more custom tailored for you. Maybe a smiling woman playing with her children in a backyard garden. Someone probably nestled in the nook of their custom designed library with all their favorite books on the shelves. Or maybe you'd show a strong, flexible person doing yoga on a gorgeous beach. You see, we're all here having this human experience and we'd love for it to be as fulfilling as possible. But if the path was clear and living it was easy, we'd all be doing it. Here's the good news. There are keys in your astrology chart to discovering your vision of health, wealth, and fulfillment. And beginning in September, we have three master astrologers who are going to show you how to find it. 
You can learn more and enroll now at the promotional pricing in the link in the show notes or at astrologyhub.com slash workshop. So here's to living your vision of health, wealth, and fulfillment. I really hope to see you there. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Let's just dive into all the different days then. All right. So the first thing we have coming up on the 28th of August is we have Mars in a Saspi quadrate relationship with Jupiter. So that's Mars Saspi quadrate Jupiter starting off the day earlier in the morning. First of all, Mars Saspi quadrate Jupiter or Mars in any hard aspect with Jupiter has to do with the successful work. Mars is the universal signification of work. And Jupiter is the universal significator of success. And so when we bring Mars and Jupiter together in any of these hard aspects of manifestation, it can represent a day of victory. It can represent a day of success. And it can represent a day where we have that much more energy or enthusiasm to infuse that work into our environment because we can feel within ourselves the manifestation of success as a result of our efforts. If you have Mars-Jupiter as a natal combination, then you probably find yourself engaging in work in a full throttle sort of way, because for you, there is a direct relationship between the work that you're doing within the world and the success that you achieve within the world. And so you probably don't have any qualms or any issues at all in terms of working hard, because for you, working hard directly gives you the sort of adrenaline and it directly gives you the sort of positive releases within yourself that causes you to know the more I work, the more I gain, the more I gain, the more I feel successful, the more I feel successful, the more I feel my sense of self-worth increasing. So if you have this combination as a hard aspect within your natal chart, then it stands to reason that this is a day that's going to resonate with you very strongly. And if you're wanting to launch a project into the world, that is something that you want to carry the essence of success within it, then this is a wonderful day to do that. On the same day, we have Venus in a parallel relationship to the sun. Venus and the sun coming together in any sort of hard aspect relationship is going to represent the concrete manifestation of our pleasures within this world. Now, we know that Venus can only be a maximum of 48 degrees away from the sun in the zodiac. Venus' sun has to do with the physicality of beauty. Venus meaning beauty, the sun meaning physicality or our ability to make something manifest. So having Venus and the sun together is representing our ability to bring out beauty out of ourselves into the world. And that beauty can be something that is directly serving us for the purpose of making our lives feel more comfortable. But that beauty can also be something that we know enriches our environment at large and causes our environment on the whole to become a more nurturing, a more happy, a more pleasant place to be. So on this day, we have the two combinations, which are very great combinations, the Mars-Jupiter combination earlier in the morning followed by the Venus-Sun combination later within the afternoon. And I think that these two combinations are extremely wonderful and auspicious, especially if you want to release something in the world that is beautiful because you've invested a lot of time with making it into something beautiful. It could be you releasing something that attracts people to your business. And the Mars-Jupiter combination is definitely one of our universal omens for successful work in general. So if you are an entrepreneur or are wanting to release something into the world on the day that has this extra um in it, or that has this extra power, as far as the Mars Jupiter is concerned, as well as something that you know can add a greater sense of value or meaning to your life and also be attractive for other people in the world to be drawn and magnetized towards you as a result of the Venus parallel sun combination, then the 28th of August is a wonderful day for that. We have on that same day, Uranus stationing retrograde. I'm never a person who talks about Uranus stationing retrograde because I'm not the person who talks about Pluto stationing retrograde, because I'm also not the person who talks about Neptune stationing retrograde, because from an astrological perspective, 
Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto stay retrograde for about half the year every year. So the point at which they station retrograde is kind of the point at which they're just doing what they always do. Now, 29th of August, the sky is pretty dead. There isn't that much going on in the sky on the 29th of August. So go figure. <laughs> Whatever you have to do, probably do it the day before on the 28th when we're having such an electric sky because that is more a day that is corresponding with success and the manifestation of our will within the world more so than the 29th, which is looking like a dead air sort of day. Moving on through to the 30th of August, we have Mercury in a parallel relationship with Mars. And Mercury parallel Mars is a wonderful combination and it can also be a little bit of an edgy combination. Mercury has to do with our words. Mars has to do with fire as well as war. So very often when we have Mercury Mars from a natal perspective, we're people who know how to speak up for ourselves. We're not shy with words. We don't cut corners. We know what to say. We actually probably don't know what to say. We know how to use words, but we probably don't really know how to use them in the most tactful or the most skillful way or in a way that really acknowledges any of the social graces that one would imagine people would acknowledge in terms of communication. Mercury Mars can create corrosive words. And so very often when we have Mercury Mars as a natal combination in any hard aspects combination, we can find ourselves being a little bit harsh as far as our language is concerned because our language doesn't necessarily have any of the frivolities or any of the frills attached to it that other people with nicer Mercury Venus placements probably have. And that's completely okay. However, the point is on this day, we want to make sure that even as we stand up for ourselves with our language, even as we advocate for ourselves with our language, that we're doing so in a way that isn't corrosive, in a way that isn't explosive, and in a way that doesn't cause us to enter a field of argumentativeness with other people just because we want to get our point across. On the day when we have Mercury parallel Mars or Mercury in any hard aspect relationship with Mars, there can be a sense of us speaking just for the sake of speaking because Mercury Mars also puts fire on our tongue. And so it could feel as if we want to express ourselves particularly strongly through language on this day. However, Mercury Mars isn't the sort of language expressivity vehicle that we normally think of while we think about someone saying something in a skillful way. So on this day, you might feel a great urge to debate, or you might feel a great urge to argue. And you really have to be mindful whether or not that's coming from you or whether or not you're just sensitive to the overarching themes in the air on this day. This could be a day where we hear about argumentation happening in the world at large, not just in terms of a particular country, but this could be a day where countries are not necessarily being able to see eye to eye because on this day, everybody feels emboldened to speak about the injustices that have been done to them. And in the process of that, you know, whose injustice is greater? So it can be a little bit tricky because on days like this, everybody feels as if they have something to say. And we want to make sure that if we are actually opening our mouths, and engaging in communication, we're doing so in a way that isn't corrosive, explosive, and potentially hurtful. Mercury Mars from a medical astrology perspective is also a combination that has to do with migraines because Mercury Mars can be fire on the tongue, but it can also be fire in the brain. And so we want to make sure that we aren't over forcing ourselves to do things that had better not been done at all, just because we feel this excess level of firepower within us, or just because we feel this heat within our heads that wants to manifest itself in terms of activity. It's a wonderful day to take a break. It's a wonderful day to take it slow. It's a wonderful day to pull back the reins of how much you're doing within the world, because this could also be the sort of day where we're putting the petal to the metal or whatever people say in America. But this could be a, one of those days where we're forcing ourselves to speed past limits that actually are set in place for a reason 
And in the process of doing that, we can mentally exhaust ourselves, but we could also run the risk of getting into accidents, both literally as well as figuratively, because of the level of speed this puts within us. On days when we have Mercury Saturn, we find ourselves stuck in traffic jams. On days when we have Mercury Mars, we find everybody speeding because everybody feels as if their agenda is the biggest agenda that matters in the world. And so it is also a day that we should practice a little bit more care and caution, particularly as we move in the world as far as driving or riding our bikes or anything like that is concerned, because it's a day when everybody is rushing somewhere. And very often that rushing can get us nowhere at all especially if we find ourselves causing a collision. So a word to the wise from the wise is sufficient. Now, the next day, the August 31st, well, let me just check and see 30 days have September, April, June, and November. Yes, August says of 31 days. The next day, August 31st, there really isn't anything happening at all, which is why it's not showing up over here on my list. So August 31st is also another day of dead air, and probably that's for the best, because we know that we probably just ran ourselves ragged the day before <laughs> on August 30th. So might as well have a day of dead air on the 31st where we could let off some of that steam. Now, speaking of steam, on September 1st, 2023, we have Mars in a ping pong relationship with Saturn. Now, Mars Saturn in any hard aspect combination is very challenging. The combinations of stellar influences by Reinhold Eberton says that Mars Saturn represents destructive energy. And for those of us who practice medical astrology through the specific lens of teaching of Reinhold Eberton, as well as the Uranian school of astrology, we view Mars Saturn as being one of the more challenging combinations from a, from a medical astrology perspective. And the reason for this is because we know that Mars Saturn in traditional astrology is the combination that is having to do with death and destruction and just malefic or evil energy in general. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because Mars is excessively hot, Saturn is excessively cold from the perspective of the ancients. And for these reasons, neither Mars nor Saturn was thought of as being able to be supportive of human life in general. And so whenever we have hard aspects, combinations of Mars and Saturn, it's something that we really don't like. And the reason why we don't like it is because it tends not to manifest in the most positive of ways. So the month of September is starting off in a way that doesn't actually feel the best. And it's because we have the Mars Saturn Queen Kongs in the sky. And when we have Mars Saturn, it can oftentimes feel as if our energy is blocked or stunted within us, or as if we can't really get much done, or as if we are taking a tremendous amount of firepower towards an immovable obstacle. And that can create frustration within us. That can create a sense of oppression within us. And it could just feel as if there's nothing that we're doing on this day that actually is manifesting in the most positive of ways. So if you want to launch something, you probably don't want to launch it on the day that we have Mars in a Queen Kong's relationship with Saturn. Now, I've heard many people share their opinions about what they think the Queen Kong's means. I was going to say what they think the Queen Kong's aspect means. However, a Queen Kong's is definitely not an aspect. However, as far as it being a sort of planetary relationship, we treat Queen Kong's as if they were aspects. Now, the Queen Kong's is one of the most challenging combinations between any set of planets. And the reason for that is because from a traditional astrology perspective, when two things are in the Queen Kong's relationship, those are two things that, on the one hand, there are some traditional astrologers who say they don't see each other. So someone would look at this and say that the Mars and Saturn don't see each other. But what does that even mean in the real world? It literally means nothing whatsoever. So in terms of understanding how we could get a meaning out of this, we, I, have come to the conclusion through my own client's practice, that when two things are in the Queen Kong's relationship, 
those two things have gone as far out of their way as possible to not be in a relationship with each other to the point where they create another type of relationship called a non-relationship. It's as if two people were standing in the room, one person standing in one corner of the room, the other person standing in the other corner of the room, and the two of them are determined not to talk to each other. So that when everybody else comes into that room, they look at those two people and they're like, what's wrong with them? If you know, why are they doing that? So in the process of these two planets trying their hardest not to be in a relationship, they create another type of relationship called a non-relationship. And it's obvious and visible for everybody to see. And that's what's happening with Mars and Saturn on the 1st of September. So as far as days go, I wouldn't use this day for much of anything because it's a very challenging day. It's a day of disruptive energy. It's a day where we feel stunted or blocked or as if we can't really move forward in the sort of ways that we want to. It's not a day that corresponds with success. It's actively a day that corresponds with the absolute opposite of success. And it just doesn't feel good at all. And on top of that, Saturn is going to be retrograde and in Pisces. And a Saturn in Pisces really isn't the best Saturn in the world at all. So throwing that Saturn retrograde in Pisces into a quincunx relationship with Mars makes for a day that we probably would have wished had not dared to begin with. Moving on through to September the 2nd, we are now having the combination of Mercury contra parallel Mars on the 2nd of September. Now, we've spoken about the Mercury-Mars combination already for the 30th of August, so I'm not going to repeat the majority of what I said, but what I will say is that the contra-parallel is similar to an opposition. So whereas on the 30th of August, we had Mercury in a parallel relationship with Mars, which is similar to a conjunction, on the 2nd of September, we have Mercury in a contra-parallel relationship with Mars, which is similar to an opposition. And the reason why they could be in a conjunction type relationship on one day and an opposition type relationship two days later is because these are combinations in declination. They are not combinations in terms of their zodiacal degrees but these are combinations in declination. So for those of you who aren't familiar with how to use declination in astrology or these parallels or contra parallels, which are aspects in declination, that's another topic for another day. But be it resolved, on the 2nd of September, we do have a combination between Mercury and Mars that is similar to an opposition. And so on this day, we definitely do feel as if there is more chance for verbal abuse. And I say verbal abuse because Mercury is representing words, Mars is representing war. So there's definitely more of a chance for us to say things that are harsh or to be on the receiving end of words that are harsh, which probably causes us to be in conflict with others. And that's the more challenging side of this combination. On the other side of this, it could be a day where we're feeling a lot of mental fire once again, or mental agitation. So one of the things that I like to do whenever I feel overly mentally stimulated is I like to get it out in terms of words, because those words, particularly as far as writing is concerned, because if I can write furiously on paper, that's basically the astrological equivalent of speaking furiously with a person. And because I don't necessarily want to speak furiously with anyone, I'd rather write furiously on paper because it's a much more healthy way of expressing oneself and of working through the influence of Mercury in a conscious parallel relationship with Mars. Now, on the 3rd of September, which is the final day within this series, we have Venus stationing direct. Now, Venus stationing direct is a very wonderful thing insofar as any planet stationing direct is a wonderful thing because it's a far better thing than when that planet stationed retrograde to begin with. However, because she still hasn't fully turned direct, I'd say that it's probably not the most useful day as far as doing anything is concerned. And the reason for that is because after a planet has just been retrograde 
and is in a state of stationing, if you were to use that planet for anything from an electional astrology perspective, it might feel as if it takes that planet a very long time to activate, or it might feel as if it takes that planet a very long time to really step forward into its power because stationing direct only means that she stopped going retrograde. It doesn't actually mean that she has returned to her normal upswing of action. So I would say that this is a wonderful day as far as contemplating the Venusian things that you want to do or the Venusian things that you want to accomplish. It could be a very wonderful planning day if you are someone who are an artist. It could be a great day to come together with your community or your team to plan how you're going to create a more beautiful or a more aesthetically experienced or a more or a more aesthetically pleasing user experience because it's a wonderful day for planting the seeds as far as the planning process is concerned in terms of the creation of beauty within the world. And if you can use that day to plan out how you're going to relaunch into business or how you're going to move into the world as a business being, but do that from a perspective of really knowing how you want your imagery to look, how you want the user experience to be like, how you want your words to sound, how you want the overall experience of a person interacting with your company to be, then this could be a very wonderful day for making all of those plans happen because truthfully, the very next day, even though we're not supposed to be going on to September 4th, truthfully, the very next day, we have Mercury in a trine relationship with Jupiter. And while I'm not a trine person whatsoever, who doesn't like Mercury, Jupiter? Mercury, Jupiter means that we have the ability to communicate with others this beautiful thing or this abundant vision that we have within us. So the 3rd of September is a wonderful day for planning what it is you intend to communicate. And the 4th of September is a wonderful day to communicate that. So all in all, this is our astrological weather for the week of August 28th. We see the week starting off in a very powerful way on the 28th of August. And we have a few potholes both on the 30th of August as well as the 2nd of August in terms of saying things we probably don't mean to say. And so instead of saying it, write it. And I don't mean actually write it in an insulting email because that is just as bad as saying it. I mean, write down something else, you know, write in your journal, write in your book, start writing a book. Mercury Mars is a wonderful combination for writing words on paper in general. And even though at the end of the day, you might chop out half of those words because you realize those words were coming from a place that was far too exuberant within you. And that place probably isn't feeling as grounded as possible. You still do want to use that Mercury Mars energy and that influence in a way that is more positive than it is destructive. So we have those two potholes on the 30th of August, as well as on the 2nd of September. And like I said, the 1st of September is basically not good for anything at all. However, we can use all of these days where it feels like there is a little bit more of a challenge in the air to sit down, regroup, reconstitute ourselves, and to really figure out what we want to be doing. Any day when there's a challenging aspect in the sky is a wonderful day to sit down and step away from action for a bit so that we can regroup and we can reconsider how we want to actually show up within the world. So those challenging days, once again, are the 30th of August, the 1st of September, as well as the 2nd of September. However, we can use the rest of the days within this to our advantage, and we could definitely use some of those challenging days to help us with our planning process, and particularly in the Mercury-Mars days to help us to write our thoughts on paper, which could be a very valuable thing that we engage in in the end. I love how you just summarized that. I, the whole time I was making notes, okay, it's exactly what I would have said as the summary is exactly what you just went through. The only other thing was really pointing out that there is an opportunity towards the end of the week to really plant those seeds for any future endeavors that you want to work on in terms of bringing beauty into the world. And mm. we, it, probably with a pretty 
big definition. You know, mm. beautiful energy, beautiful aesthetics, beautiful words, beautiful ideas. But that at the end of the week, we have that too. Michael, this is so helpful. And I also, I, I often have this question for astrologers. When there's tense aspects or when there's a certain energetic signature in the sky, are we, is it for us to lean into that signature or is it for us to be aware of it and not necessarily give into the impulse that it's bringing up? And what I'm hearing from you, at least for this week in, this, in the specifics that you brought in, is that it is a little bit more like resist the urge to, you know, <laughs> fire off the horrible, you know, the mean text or, um, you know, get super aggravated and angry, like resist the urge to do that and really sort of turn the energy inward and use it as a way to, to decide how we want to move going, going forward. Is that an yep. accurate interpretation of, of what you said? Definitely. It most definitely is. Okay. Well, if you love the way Michael teaches, if you love the way that Michael is, is interpreting this astrological language, and if you would love to learn how to apply that interpretive skill to your chart when it comes to fulfillment, you know, how you find that path to really feel that ultimate fulfillment and peace. Michael, is there anything you want to say about your specific workshop in the workshop series? I think that the specific part that I'll be covering is something that's really important to me because a big part of the work we do in traditional astrology is we focus on the ascendant and we focus on the ruler of the ascendant. And so largely what I want to take people through is one, how to find the ruler of the ascendant in their charts. But what does it mean to have the ruler of the ascendant in various houses within your chart and potentially even looking at some of the aspects to the ruler of the ascendant so that we can see what is available to us within this lifetime. And so we can also see where we should be channeling the majority of our energy or our impetus. So we're going to be taking a deep dive into the actual house location of the ruler of the ascendant, but we'll also be looking at planets in the ascendant, aspects to the ascendant, and what people can do with what they've been given so that they could live a more fulfilling life. Hmm. You go to astrologyhub.com slash workshop to get more information on this. And the way it's working is the three teachers are each taking a week. So the first week is the health week. The second week is the fulfillment week. The third week is the wealth week. And they are covering an aspect of these important elements of our lives and how to actually how to actually find your makeup for these things in your chart, like Michael just said. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful that you're going to be covering this aspect of life for all of us and helping us to really simplify the process of finding it in our charts. So awesome. again, that's starting next week with Judith Hill's medical astrology perspective and workshop in terms of decoding aspects of our health based on the 12 zodiac signs. She's going to go through all those signs. Um, and then after Michael, Georgia's going to be covering where we have blocks to abundance and how we can find those blocks, get rid of those blocks and really clear the way for um, the, the way that we're here to experience abundance or prosperity, however you want to look at that. Oh, can't wait for it, Michael. I've loved having this opportunity to have you on the podcast several times in one month. Yay. And we're <laughs> going to have another episode with Michael um, next week. So yes. tune in, look for that. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, this would be a great time to do it. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Subscribe to the, the podcast on your podcast player. And also make sure you're signed up for The Insider because The Insider is where you get information about the weekly weather ahead, also any of the upcoming events that we have. So go ahead and sign up for that at astrologyup.com slash insider. It's totally free. Check it out. Thank you, Michael. It's going to be a great week. Thanks to all of you for being here. Thank you for being a part of our community. Thank you, as always, for making astrology a part of your life. We'll catch you on the next episode. Take care. Everybody.